friends, as we talk uh, more and do more and more comparison of the two civilizations, the Indic and the modern. Uh, today, let us spend some time on on what we call the Gotra system. And because I'm speaking in English, I'm calling it Gotra. Otherwise, we are all mostly familiar about it as the Gotra. So, uh, when we talk about the Gotra, we know that uh, all mostly Indic people are aware that we belong to a particular Gotra. And uh, the Gotra usually comes from the from the from the male side. And even after marriage, uh, it's the male Gotra that's that's then taken in for the girl too. And then uh, usually within Gotras, uh, they're considered like siblings when it comes to intermarriage and all. So marriages are not done or frowned upon definitely. So this is something that's been coming up. But most of you might be either uh, bewildered about the Gotra system or maybe embarrassed or or totally ignorant, whichever. But then the Gotra system continues in Indic societies. And it's not something that's limited just to Brahmins or anything like that. You will find that even non-Brahmins, everybody also has Gotra, uh, which again points to something. Now, because Gotra means that you are ultimately belonging to that particular Rishi in terms of lineage. So, you you know, the, the very fact that the caste is out of birth is wrong because all of these people, it doesn't matter. In the middle of your caste, you still belong to, you still share your Gotras, which means that you all are the progeny of the same Rishi. The Gotras essentially come from a set of uh, uh, seven, eight or nine rishis. Uh, they are the pre, you know, the, the very pre-ancient uh, Vedic rishis uh, uh, from whom uh, that lineage comes in. And then of course you'll also find that when you check more Gotras, you'll find probably another 49 Gotras. But then as time went on, there were more distinguished people who, were, who came in certain lineages and those, those names also became uh, marked. And, but then all of them, all of these 49 can still be traced back to this basic 7, uh, seven 8 or, or so rishis. And, uh, and these uh, rishis basically are supposed to be uh, the fountainhead of each particular lineage. Gautra in itself comes from the word in Sanskrit called Gautra. Gau means cow and tra is shed. So it's a cow shed. Now it's either cow shed or it's the it's the family or the ashram of that particular rishi from which all of these people owe their lineages lineages to. The fact that when a woman marries into uh, marries and then she adopts the gotra of the male uh, seems somewhat like a gender bias and it might incense a few people. But then let's just examine this gotra system a little more carefully before we come to any such conclusions. Normally, we are aware that our ancients uh, have generally are not foolish people. They've been very wise and after years and years of observation of human experience, they have formulated certain practices which then have come as legacy and inherited by us. So let us study this particular practice and see if there's merit in it or what and take a scientific look at it. And to do that, I will get into the realm of the DNA uh, and the chromosomes. Now, you know that uh, the human uh, body actually consists of uh, 23 pairs of chromosomes or 46 chromosomes. And the 23 pairs because uh, the 23 from the father and the 23 from the mother. The one chromosome that determines, one pair of chromosome that basically determines a sex is called the double X or the double y cro uh, uh, XY chromosome. So it is the XX or the XY chromosome which essentially determines what sex you are. The XX uh, happens because the father is the one who has a chromosome as XY and when that combines with the mother's XX and the outcome are two X's then you have a female baby and if the outcome is an X and a Y then you have a male baby. So that means the male baby is getting the Y chromosome of the father. And obviously, the father would have got the Y chromosome of his father and then his grandfather. And then it goes on right up to thousands of years ago of the first Rishi who in whose name this lineage has been marked. So if we really look at the Y chromosome today, that means I'm carrying the Y chromosome of the ancient Rishi from whose Gotra I belong to. Why is it not so for the female? Because the excess. Firstly, that the excess, because they exist in pairs, they can inter, they can cross over, they can exchange and they can mix. 
also the x coming from the father and the x of the mother combined now the x of the father is from his mother and then the x there which he has got would have been from his her husband's mother so you see the lineage is not a straight line when it comes to the x's so it is not possible to trace the x lineage in that fashion as you are able to trace the y lineage and now you may understand why the the y gotra or the y lineage or i mean xy as an alphabet the y uh, chromosome has been earmarked to be able to uh, earmark is as a particular gotra and then you understand why the male lineage has been carrying on now there is another very interesting factor about the y chromosome the y chromosome as time goes on has been diminishing in size it has not been able to nourish itself as the x chromosome the reason being that the y chromosome is the only unique chromosome in your body and it does not pair with anything else so it cannot exchange it cannot cross over it cannot repair itself with the help of any other chromosome unlike all the other chromosomes so the other chromosomes have got their self correct facility the y chromosome does not have it because of which what happens is that the y chromosome has slowly been diminishing in health and has been reducing in size now if you are scientists they will then also say that this then means that in a few million years it's quite possible that the y chromosome completely disappears now this has got a few repercussions firstly the fact that it does not repair itself means that certain defects that are prevalent in a y chromosome carries on but then those defects can remain dormant in in the in the health of a human being but then if the inter if they if there is an intra marriage within the same gotra now remember that same defect is also in the other y chromosome now this defect becoming common in the in between them can start becoming pronounced if it becomes pronounced it might even manifest itself in the child's health and hence you might have children born with defective genes and defects uh, birth defects and in order to avoid that and to be able to have healthy breeding interbreeding they have the ancients then have have uh, uh, have earmarked that people from within the same gotra do not marry why because the defects do not become prominent and they remain dormant as long as they remain very very minor there is also another aspect that is where we said in a few million years it's possible that the the y might completely disappear what would happen then would reproduction stop no maybe because of the advances in science is quite likely that by that time the 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 fem the females are able to reproduce through artificial insemination or whatever by forming two xs which means you can have female babies forever so females can just keep reproducing females and you can have a complete planet with complete females that means now here is where the wisdom of our ancients comes comes across why is they tried to preserve the y chromosome they have made it precious but they have not made it as immortal the 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 status was given to the female because the outcome is that the female is able to to create so she has been accorded the status of divinity so that is why she has become ma shakti why because she can continue with creation and she is the fountainhead of all creation and she can continue to do that even without the male and that is why that level of status has been accorded to the female so you see coming from uh, where we started with the possible gender bias we are finding that the gotra system actually has gone on to place the female on a much higher pedestal because men uh, have realized that the one who is immortal is the female and not the male the male is one that is to be preserved but then the one who is the root of everything is actually the female so see uh, friends you can you can then appreciate the beauty of the indic culture that comes through these kind of sciences which comes through these kind of a human experiences that have been carried on and not interrupted by calamities or war or destruction or discontinuation but then it is thousands of years of memory thousands of years of experience crystallized into certain practices and brought into the indic civilization that we follow to this state once again we have enjoyed this th this session thoroughly and let's hope we will uh, continue to be together and enjoy certain other aspects of our civilization as we go along till then thank you for listening bye bye